All right, this is the part that I enjoy. After going through all of the testing, the restorative process, and the stitch-offs that I do off-camera just to test the strength of the machine, this is the confirmation phase where I can finally show a machine ready, getting ready to get shipped. And this particular machine, you've already seen it in that comparative between the 99K and the Spartan. This is Mary's Spartan that's going to be heading to Peoria, Illinois. Again, born February 25th, 1959. So we're looking at a machine that's quickly approaching 60 years old. Uh, doesn't look like it through the camera, does it? And we're going to also show not only the aesthetic beauty of this machine, but also the strength of this machine. Remember again, this Spartan uh, is actually powered by a 0.8 amp motor. So what better way to do it, if I can get this to zoom in and zoom clear, what better way to do it than to test it against European full grain vegetable tanned leather, which is this first sew off that we're going to be doing. And look at the thickness of that from the side. Three layers of this stuff. We're probably talking close to 14 to 16 ounces of full grain vegetable tan leather. And you know what? You're going to be surprised how easily this Spartan gets the job done. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit towards uh, the needle, head over to the machine, and we'll see if we can get this sew off uh, done. And again, you're talking about three layers, so. You know what, when it comes to heavy duty sewing, there's certain machines that can do it, and there's certain machines that can do it easy. This is going to look pretty doggone easy considering the task that we have at hand. And I better turn my little screen around so I can see what you're seeing. Otherwise, Lord knows, we might be photographing my chair instead of the sew off itself. We just move it just a little bit. There we go. I think that's pretty good. You get the idea. You're smart. All right. So I'm going to get my foot in place. Yes, I have my slippers on. I haven't learned my lesson, but doggone it, they're comfortable. So let me just make sure we're all set. Looks like we're in great shape. Here we go. Three layers of European full grain vegetable tanned leather. Here we go. Well, gosh, I wish that had been a challenge. I wish that had been a challenge. I really do. Mary, I'm sorry. I thought three layers was going to like more than do the job to give your machine a challenge, but hey, I guess not. So I'm going to see if I can position it. It's going to be hard. The color of the thread, the color of the leather, you'll be able to see it a lot easier when we go to lighter uh, excuse me, darker fabrics, but you can see here, this is our stitch quality across the top. I went a little bit off course, a little bit of a curvy type looking stitch there, but if I turn it like this as well, you're really going to be able to see, I think, just how gorgeous that stitch is. I'm kind of looking at the camera as well just to make sure you can see what I'm seeing, because that's a lovely stitch, and I'll be happy to zoom in afterwards as well. And then on the back, it's really tough to see it. Uh, but let me see if I can bend it back a little bit. That's an absolutely gorgeous lock-in stitch as well. So between the top and the bottom, and no challenge whatsoever, look at again what we just sewed through, and then remember how easily we did it. Absolutely ridiculously easy. So again, three layers of European full grain vegetable tan leather, just like that, with this Spartan, this 192K powered by that 0.8 amp motor. What a neat machine. Right. Okay, we are back to this 1959 uh, Spartan 192K that is getting ready to be shipped to Mary in Peoria, Illinois. If you saw that first sew off, I hope you did, uh, we went through European full grain vegetable tanned leather not just one layer, not just two layers, but three layers of this stuff. And if I try to get really close, see how close I can get? I think that's going to be about it. 
Um, and I gotta loosen this up a little bit so I can move this more easily. I'm all over the place. Sorry, folks. You're probably gonna get motion sickness. So you can see for yourself just how gorgeous that stitch is. And again, through three layers of European full grain vegetable tan leather. If you know anything about vegetable tan leather, that stuff is nuts when it comes to the difficulty of getting through it. But we're gonna to go to something just as challenging on this next confirmation sew off from Mary's Machine that's heading towards Peoria, Illinois. Uh, we are gonna do genuine cowhide leather and not a thin piece of this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna move this to the side and, and you can see this stuff from the side as well. This is the thick of thick and uh, it's genuine cowhide. You can look at the backside and actually see the hide there. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and zip through this stuff. I'm guessing that this is probably right around eight ounces of leather. So nothing easy about this stuff. The density of it is super hardcore when it comes to a machine being able to pierce it. And we're gonna see if we can just zip right through it with this 0.8 amp motor, this super cool Spartan 192K. So here we go, uh, genuine cowhide leather, about eight ounces. And let's see what this uh, cool machine can do with this. Here we go. Well, blink and you missed it, right? Did you even hear any hesitation? I mean, honestly, even hear anything resembling like this machine was going, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Not even a blink. I mean, this machine just goes blah, 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 blah. Keep talking, Scott. Give us something, give us something to be challenged by, would you, bud? <sighs> Gotta blow off the little remnants there of this machine ripping through this stuff. Look at that stitch. You know what? You be the judge. To me, that is absolutely a spectacular stitch in every respect. The spacing, the integrity of the stitch. We turn it over. Look at the way it drives it home as well into the back nap of that uh, genuine cowhide leather. Everything about that stitch is just spot on. I'm gonna try to move it up to the camera here. Hopefully I don't blur it. I guess I am blurring it, aren't I? Look at that. There we go. That's a little bit better, I think. Wow. Love to see any other machine other than one that I've restored do something like this at that level at that level of ease. Holy mackerel. It just went through it like it was some sort of a light textile or something. I'm gonna move back over to the camera and really zoom in on that. I probably made you all feel like you were gonna go through a crash test or something, trying to show you the closeness, uh, a close-up shot of the quality of that stitch. Absolutely spot on. Getting a little bit of reflection on there, but you get the idea, you're smart. That's an absolutely gorgeous stitch. Just spectacular stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to something now that will even, in my opinion, test this machine more than the European um, full grain vegetable tan leather that you saw in the first one. Now you've seen this cowhide leather. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to U.S. Army canvas. This stuff is actually from a U.S. Army shelter half. We're not talking one layer or two layers or three layers or four layers. We're talking, we're going to try to go through five layers of this stuff. So follow me down to the needle. Boy, that was quick. You're already there. And we're going to see if we can zip down and make this U.S. Army canvas just as easy of a task for this 192K, this Spartan, as we have the leather sew-offs. And I've got to try to get my little slipper on that foot control 
and we'll see what this machine can do next. I am so impressed with that point amp motor. The point eight amp motor is just spectacular when it comes to heavy grade sewing. So here we go. We've got a total of, again, five layers of U.S. Army canvas. Here we go. I intentionally throttled that up and down so that you could see that you can harness the power of this machine too. You don't have to race like a banshee going through each and every stitch off when you're using this machine uh, in your home. You can feather that control very, very easily and still get amazing results. I don't think anyone would argue that this machine struggled in any way at all. And yet look at how spectacular that stitch quality is both on the top and also on the bottom. And if I put it like this, you could particularly, hopefully it doesn't slide off my workbench when I go over to uh, zoom in with a camera, because I really want you to see just how gorgeous this stitch in fact is. It's one thing, and I've said this innumerable times, it's one thing to be able to sew at this level, but it's another thing entirely to be able to generate a stitch of that caliber. Just look at that. The spacing, the formation, everything about that stitch, apart from my camera work, everything about that stitch is just absolutely spot on. It's just gorgeous. All the way from top to bottom. Wow. So, one final sew-off to do here because I'm getting concerned that my battery may be getting low. One final stitch off. One final confirmation sew-off for Mary's machine before I pack it up tomorrow and get it heading towards the great state of Illinois and the great city of Peoria. I just have to come out a little bit. There we go. I think that's I think that's pretty good. Apart from my thread being all cattywampus, I've got to go ahead and get my thread back where it needs to be. It's a thing sometimes is when you're sewing heavy grade like this, the thread will sometimes kind of do weird things. Let's see. Yep, I have that underneath have to make sure I have that underneath the presser foot, otherwise we're going to have an embarrassing sew-off for my next one here. Make sure it's there we go. That's the way I want it. Perfect. Okay, so what are we going to do next? First thing we're going to do is turn the screen around because I can't see what you're seeing. <laughs> oh, goodness gravy. My camera work is not so good. I'm doing this kind of late on uh, Thursday night, and I think I've been too busy today, and my, uh, yeah, my camera work is kind of yuck. So be patient with me as I get this right here. There we go. I think that'll, that'll probably work for us. Okay, so, so far, and I know that you folks are very very attentive watchers. So far we've done three layers of European full grain vegetable tan leather zip no problem. We've done genuine cowhide again look at the thickness of what we did zip no problem. We also did US Army canvas five layers of it, zip, no problem. Again, how can I challenge this machine? Well, I'm hoping through this final sew-off I can. Because what we have is we have heavy grade denim. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers of heavy grade denim. Let me move it right into camera and move my fingers out of the way 
so you can see what we're going to try to go through. You know what? That is not an easy task. Not even for one of my fully restored machines. And yet, this Spartan, I think, is probably going to get the job done very, very easily. I'm going to drop that presser foot, make sure that take up arm is in the highest position. I'm going to bend over real quick because I've got to fix my slipper. All right. Here we go. The final confirmation sew off. See if we can zip through these many, many layers. What did I say? Two, three, four, five, six layers of denim with the same incredible results that the other confirmation sew offs have shown. Here we go. Again, intentionally throttling it up and down so that you can see that it doesn't take a racehorse to get this machine to perform at this leather level. It does not take a racehorse. You don't have to race through these sew-offs in order to get some great results. So let me go ahead and get this needle out of place. Give this a quick clip and show you what it did with this heavy grade denim. Wow. I'm pulling it back intentionally. Take a look at that stitch quality. Try to move my light in a little bit too to illuminate that stitch even more. Everything about that stitch is absolutely spectacular. From top to bottom, the spacing, the stitch integrity, the way it presents, Holy mackerel, that's a gorgeous stitch. And the same thing with our lock-in as well, just an absolutely gorgeous lock-in stitch. I'm going to go ahead and lean this one up real quick, as I did with the other one, so I can get a little bit closer, move my other lamp in as well, so we get some real good light on that. I want you to see what this machine just did with six layers of heavy grade denim. And you didn't even see a second of hesitation from this machine. Look at from top to bottom. Unbelievable. Wow! Well, I'll tell you what. When it comes to getting a machine ready, there are so many steps involved to get a machine ready. Weeks of time vested in getting a machine to the level that I get it to so that no matter what you put underneath that presser foot you can have the confidence that your machine is going to get the job done. So Mary, I appreciate your patience. I appreciate uh, you, uh, you know, waiting and, and anticipating and uh, in understanding that the process takes time, well worth it. You've seen it evidenced in these sew-offs today from European full grain vegetable tan leather to cowhide to um, uh, U.S. Army canvas uh, to denim, six layers of denim. I mean, no matter what I put in front of your Spartan, your 192K, it just said, done. So I've got another 192K available. So if any of you are looking for a machine like this one, it's virtually identical. It'll be fully restored and it can be in your home. So thanks so much for being a subscriber. Thanks for being a part of this channel and making it incredible. So stay tuned, more videos to come.